If you look to your right, you can see a large area of hazel trees underneath the big oak. Hazel is a really important species of tree in woodlands in southern England. Hazel has traditionally been coppiced for hundreds of years. You can tell that this area has been coppiced. If you look around you, you can see multiple stems growing closely together, and on closer inspection, you'll see they're all growing from individual tree stumps, or stools as we call them. Hazel was coppiced by ancient woodland workers and the timber used for a whole host of things, particularly in making hedges for stock-proofing grazed areas. In the days before we had wire fences, you'd have the hazel for the binding at the top of the hedge and the stakes to keep it all upright and neat. It's also used to make a variety of different tools. And one thing that hazel is particularly useful for is thatching spars. Spars are about half a metre long the hazel is split down the middle and bent in half, a bit like a big hairpin, and used repeatedly to keep the thatch in place. For the average sized cottage, you would need around 10,000 spars, so a lot of hazel. With thatch being the main material used in roofing at the time, hazel coppicing became an important industry. It's not just hazel that was used for the local economy. Other trees that we have here, like ash and alder and willow, all have their own use for tools or construction materials. Coppicing is done in a cycle, so you cut an area, known as a coop, harvesting the hazel within. Then you would allow it to grow for eight to ten years before returning to coppice it again. So within a woodland like Bowdown, there would have been a number of different coops so that every year there would be a fresh supply of hazel. Woodlands were coppiced for such a long period of time the wildlife adapted to thrive on the cyclical coppicing regime. There would always be a recently coppiced area where there's lots of sunlight, so lots of woodland flowers grow up, which in turn means butterflies and other pollinators thrive. As the area matures, it thickens up with lots of bramble and scrub. These are great for birds, for example, warblers like chiffchaff, blackcap or willow warblers, who find it a great place to nest. As the scrub gets taller again and starts to bear fruit, the plentiful supply of hazelnuts supports one of the UK's rarer mammals, and one that we're still lucky to have here at Bowdown, the hazel dormouse. This charming little mouse with ginger fur and big dark eyes is increasingly rare across the country, so we're very lucky to find them here at Bowdown. In the early 20th century, wire fencing was manufactured, and thatching became less and less common. The need for coppicing reduced, meaning our woodlands went into decline. Often the coppicing cycle stopped and some of the wildlife that had become dependent also declined. One good example is the pearl-bordered fritillary butterfly, also known as the woodman's friend, as they appeared in abundance after an area had been coppiced. Sadly, this is a species that has hung on in only a few places in Hampshire, but has not been around for decades in Berkshire. The Wildlife Trust, over the last 15 years or so, has reinstated the coppice cycle within the woodland, replicating what people would have been doing in the past to obtain their hazel poles. Now, the primary reason for coppicing is for the benefit of nature. As a result, we are lucky enough to have a number of butterflies at Bowdown that rely on the woodland flora that is encouraged as part of the coppicing process. These include the silver washed fritillary and orange tip butterfly. Let's carry on and I can tell you a bit more about the other threats facing our woodland at the moment, specifically the tree disease, ash dieback. <laughs>